This is Dreadnought, and we're here just days before release of Diablo 3, and we're going to talk today about barbarian skills, and more specifically, barbarian skills for speed leveling. So, this is not for you hardcore players, PvPers, or people wanting tips in Inferno already. This is more of the 1 to 60 as fast as possible type talk. So, before we get into the thicket of these skills, we're going to talk about our primary skills. Bash, Frenzy, and Cleave. We're going to talk about the merits of them and, and a little bit of a DPS chart, although Diablo 3 isn't really a game style based on DPS, but we can do some simple calculations to give us a better idea of what we're going to use all three of these abilities for. Let's talk about Bash real quick, generating 6 Fury. This is actually going to be the Fury Builder primary, mostly because of Instigation. It's going to give us 100% Fury increase. So that's every swing we're going to be generating 12 Fury. That's pretty ridiculous when you look at how much Fury the even our biggest abilities cost. Uh, real quick for our calculations, we're going to assume 100 weapon damage just to make all these calculations as simple as possible in a one attack speed. Onslaught rune and pulverized rune are going to be the DPS enhancing runes. You can see the calculations here sometimes assume group size for these AOE abilities and that's what really what makes Diablo 3 calculations so difficult is trying to figure out what your average group size is going to be but if you've played beta you know that average group size is not going to be one or two it's, it's usually pretty big groups so our AOE abilities are usually the way to go when we're trying to clear things quickly so for pulverized we're going to assume three and a half on average uh, are going to be hit by this and that's going to give us a little bit of a DPS advantage over onslaught unless we're doing single target DPS. Punish is going to increase all of our abilities damage so that's definitely one to look at for some of your builds. It's actually an 18% when it stacks three times but we're just going to assume 12 is an average for our damage increase because you're not going to start with three stacks. Uh, instigation is a must for some of these uh, some of your builds because there's not an easier way to generate fury than than an instigation bash just hitting for 12 fury each time is ridiculous. Clobber, it's not a bad ability. We're not going to talk about it though because it's more of a survivability and we're not worried about survivability just yet. Uh, maybe when we get to Hell Mode, we'll open up the, the Clobber and Triumph Smite and some of these other survivability. But for we're going to plan for best case scenario, trying to get through things as fast as, as possible. And we're not really going to look at these survivability runes. Frenzy is going to generate three per swing, but when we look at the 75% attack speed increase that we can gain from frenzy we're getting up to about 5.25 worth of fury because of that speed increase so uh, it's still not going to get up to where bash is at six fury without the instigation rune uh, but we're going to do a little bit more single target dps uh, maniac is an awesome single target dps sidearm for those bosses where you want to take out some of the mobs also we're assuming that it's going to hit three on average which could be totally wrong. So if you think that's a 5 or a 2, then you can just sub in there that 5 or 2 to calculate your, your damage. But from what I've seen so far, 3 is uh, pretty close. Vanguard, 15% movement increase. Definitely take a look at that. Triumph Smite. If you're, if you're dying a lot, then go ahead and, and break those out. But if you're not, don't worry about them. Cleave is going to be our group damage ability and frenzy and bash really don't compare when we're looking at cleave and you might already be looking at this too that we're assuming for enemies hit and that that can be much higher than that if you're finding your cleaves out right you can be hitting five six per swing and averaging three or four and doing a lot more damage than this 240 which is still a sizable amount without rune Rupture is an awesome rune that you get early on, and you'll probably be uh, using Rupture for a long time just because it's a great rune, increasing your AoE damage. Broad Sweep, uh, very comparable to Rupture. Reaping Swing uh, is a, a must look at, giving you another 3 Fury per swing. So those Fury intensive builds, Cleave with Reaping Swing just might be the way to go, and it's what I have my eye on for later levels, but uh, Rupture definitely for early game. These are the survivability runes. So really when we look at it, single target DPS, Frenzy comes out in the lead a little bit over Bash, um, and then Cleave in the end. Group TV, DPS, it's just it's Cleave all the way. Frenzy and Bash have some group DPS runes, but nothing comparing to Cleave. Fury Generation, Bash, and definitely Bash with this in instigation rune that you're going to get later on, but even without that, Bash is already giving you six Fury on runes, so 
then cleave, then frenzy. So a lot of people get these two mixed up. Frenzy seems like it's going to generate more than cleave, but you'd have to be almost perfect with that stack to average above cleave. And if you have reaping swing, then there's no way that you're going to beat cleave with frenzy. So you're probably going to have utility for all three of these. There's no just one best ability. It's more of an instance base. And even though you can't switch all of these abil abilities right away, there's a little bit of a cooldown. It's going to be useful to switch between group damage and boss damage. So let's look real quick at some examples of builds. A lot of these come from forms or similar builds from forms. People posting and saying, hey, what do you think about this? So let's look at this build real quick. Uh, this is actually an example of a bad build, and we're going to talk about uh, why it's a bad build in a second here. And But we see Frenzy, Hammer of the Ancients, Sprint, Strath Berserker, Call of the Ancients, Battle Rage. These are all great abilities, but there's a big problem here. And it's the number one most important thing to plan out as a Barbarian is your Fury Generation versus Fury Cost. So really, this build only has Frenzy as its Fury Generator, and Frenzy is not a great fury generator but the real issue here is that we have five fury spenders so really we're just going to be spamming frenzy and then every once in a while using one of these abilities and really just a waste of these abilities to not be able to to use very often all right let's look at a example of a a good build and this is a build that has been floating around the forums it's called the dread bomb build really because the whole build is built around the dread bomb so let's look at the merits and the, the downside of this build we look here, we have Cleave with a Reaping Swing that's going to give us the additional Fury. Uh, Leap, also a Fury Generator, and in my opinion, Leap is just a must, giving you 15 Fury and having some amazing runes, and that time you're going to cut away from going from group to group is just amazing. So uh, Leap, definitely awesome Fury Builder. Now we have two Fury Neutral abilities, Revenge and Overpower. Do not cost fury and do not generate fury. These are just used when the cooldown is up or used when it proc hits. And it's awesome to have a couple of these in your build that don't cost anything but do better damage than your cleave does. Wrath of the Berserker, 120 second cooldown. Uh, that's our, our really our only fury spender except for Dread Bomb. But Dread Bomb is going to be more of. Uh, a useful ability when we're at max fury because if you if you play the beta and you have a good idea of Barbarian skills you're looking at this build and saying hey there's just way too much fury in this build you're not going to be able to spend it all that's true except for dread bomb which is going to expend all remaining fury to throw a corpse which inflicts an additional 3% weapon damage to weapon throw for each point of fury expended to all enemies within 12 yards of the target so at 100 Fury, that's going to be doing 300% AoE damage to 12 yards. And if we spec into Animosity, it's going to be b bigger than that. If we spec into No Escape, it's going to be even bigger. So this is an example of using all of your skills together to, to create this one big Dread Bomb. And there's no cooldown on this. So this is any time you have too much Fury, just dump it. If you're sitting at home, though, and you're skeptical, and you're saying, well, no one really knows what the best build is going to be until they play through then I agree with you, you're right, but there's there's definitely merit into looking at these abilities and getting an idea of what you're going to try out first and see how well it works. Oh, and this is also a useful speed leveling build because it has very few defensive type abilities. Um, so this is best case scenario, it has to be tweaked if you're getting killed too often. But the real reason that this is not a viable leveling build is because of Dread Bomb. Unlocked at level 54, so great leveling from 54 to 60, but if you want a little bit of help before that, then this is probably not the way to go. So what I recommend doing is creating builds at sub 20, 20, 30, 40, and 50 so that you can have builds throughout your journey. So let's look at a level 20 build here we have only abilities level 20 and like I said you want to be optimistic when creating these builds make a build that is just gonna tear through things really quickly and make you move really quickly and the downside of these rip through builds is that you might be a little too squishy and you might be dying a lot and if that's the case then you definitely need to tweak it but start with the best case scenario start with both leap and sprint you know why not so looking at this build it's similar to our level 60 build we have two fury generators we have a Fury Neutral right here, uh, actually a third Fury Generator, and then two Fury Spenders. 
uh, sprint and seismic slam and seismic slam is our money shot with this build this is our fury dump because it costs a decent amount of fury for aoe damage and has no cooldown and that's the real key to building a successful barbarian build is having a fury dump you need to have that one ability that does aoe damage and has no cooldown so that you don't get stuck at max fury so the real things to take away from this is there is no best build yet and builds are mostly built around your personal play style but some of the key points to take away is to first consider your fury generation versus fury expenditure next look at your movement speed increase because a lot of the early game is just running from one battle to the next and if you can decrease the amount of time that takes then you're decreasing the time that it takes to get to 60. Uh, next is lots of aoe damage if you're coming up on a boss that's fine switch out your abilities put in some bash and get some more focus fire abilities but until then keep this hack slash gold up for as long as you can and bonus is just burst damage if you can get a burst damage in there then that's even better this doesn't have a burst damage because it's low level but the dread bomb and wrath of berserker are both burst damage that you can hit every time you come up to a rare mob or champion group or a boss you can just have that ready to unload i can't tell you when our next video will be when we hit level 60 we're going to come out with our next video with some tips and strategies about what we learned going through nightmare and hell mode if you liked our video and you want to see our tips and strategies at level 60 want to hit subscribe up top to get the video right as it comes out.